Uh, it's Mr. Ali Abdullahi. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So today uh, I'm gonna talking about the metaverse. Not really about the metaverse, uh, metaverse itself. Just gonna take a look at the other side of metaverse deployments, the in-place components and the connectivities. Because as far as you know, you know we have different type of metaverse deployments. We have different vendors, different companies, they have their own deployment of the metaverse, but we are hearing too many times since last two years about the metaverse and different vendors, companies started to deploy their own metaverse systems and environments. So, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, a bit about myself. Uh, so I'm Ali, I'm a security engineer at Picnic Technologies in Netherlands. So I'm a security researcher for a decade and uh, I'm regularly participating as a speaker or trainer in uh, different conferences across the world. And uh, I just want to go a bit faster, uh, too many slides. So let's talk about the agenda of this presentation. So first of all, we will take a look at the metaverse itself, uh, different components, different layers and uh, connectivities and different technologies in use within the metaverse deployments. And after that, we will try to identify different security risks and threats. And uh, also this presentation is just the starting points. Right now there are too many security researchers around the world that are working on metaverse, they are working on these kind of technologies nowadays. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can see more and more research and uh, papers uh, around uh, these kind of technologies. And also do not expect to cover all the things that are just uh, a couple of items uh, that we are going to talk about today and yeah let's get started so what actually metaverse does so uh, we heard that metaverse is gonna bring in go real life into digital one and uh, like uh, we can do video games entertainment we can do like a social networking and remote working as well as a uh, like a investment as well. And uh, here you can see the different components and items within the metaverse, like the virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, extended reality, NFTs and digital assets, crypto as well as Web3, which is a, a very big part of that. And uh, it's a separated topic if you want to talk about. So what is the... Uh, main metaverse impact is actually the main impact is on, on our daily life and real life actually and uh, also another impact is on our daily work and as well as doing education is possible as well throughout the metaverse entertainment as well which is a uh, very very big item here uh, media and also investment and also i hear like a, some sort of ceremonies inside metaverse and well as the wedding party throughout metaverse etc etc but it's still a black box so we don't know much more about the the metaverse itself so we just want to more about it because we we are hearing different definitions of metaverse from different companies different deployments and vendors around the world but it's still a black box even for me okay uh Let's talk about a, a tangible example of a, a simple architecture. So we have different layers here, so starting with the basic layer, which is uh, uh, including the mathematical function, SecP, 265K1, which is the BTC, uh, public key, and uh, serialization as well. We have core layer, which is responsible for algorithms, for hashing, databases, networking as well. Model layer containing the account credentials, uh, ledger addresses, account addresses, etc., etc., And we have service layer, including the HTTP connections, queries, as well as the subscription models. And uh, it, this is the age level of the architecture, which is uh, connected directly to the human interface. And in human interfaces, we have uh, different mediums, like uh, mobile applications, web application, etc., etc. 
So right now, we just want to start in with the basic layer. So I said that we have a, like a different functions, C, C++ based functions, general functions, and mathematical libraries. And uh, if I want to mention some, some of the threats here, we, we can like uh, mentioning a first attack against uh, uh, SecP265 and uh, buffer overflow vulnerabilities, brute forcing against uh, mathematical function as well as reverse engineering. And uh, yeah, I also just mentioned some CVs here as well. So core layer, we have networking, networking protocol, we have proof of work here, and also we are uh, seeing the databases like SQLite, like LevelDB, and the other. Uh, also, the threats, like if I want to say about the threats in this layer, it's a Erebus attack, Eclipse attack, or Cybling attack, which is a, some sort of node isolation, as well as a denial of service attack against the networking part, I would say the IP backbone infrastructure. So a bit in depth in the previous slide, uh, like about talking about the cyber attack, which is a, like a, it will leads to this double spending, and it's trying to infecting uh, honest communities, uh, and also uh, to 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 be able to perform falsifying uh, files, like a, a falsifying digital files, and also Erebus is uh, also the same, but uh, targeting. Uh, internet service providers and the ISPs hosting and providing services to public Bitcoin nodes. And uh, Eclipse is also, uh, it's some sort of redirection attack and uh, trying to redirect victim connections to other compromised, other co already compromised uh, nodes which, which are infected. Service layer, so we have a blockchain core nodes here, we have HTTP connections here, as well as a client side. So you can see that we have a core nodes, we have a connectivity between core nodes and HTTP server, and uh, the connection between HTTP and client, and in between we have APIs, we have WebSocket, we have JSON RPC, etc., etc. and the threats could be like a remote code execution, URI, URI injection, uh, API vulnerabilities like the sensitive uh, sensitive data disclosure and uh, through the APIs and uh, web sockets uh, vulnerabilities like the sniffing injection and uh, also some maybe some specific vulnerabilities regarding the specific technologies like uh, zero MQ here uh, which is uh, some sort of a messaging library and. So the, the other part, and the, which is a very, very critical, is communication and the connectivity. So we just want to use metaverse, we just want to use this kind of technology. So the main part of the usage of the technology is the connectivity between my equipment, my device, like my mobile phone and uh, other equipments within the core network, within the service provider. So basically, you can see cellular communication, like uh, 3G to 6G com uh, communication, but we are already dealing with mostly with 4G and 5G communication nowadays. And also another vital part is uh, uh, radio part or radio access networks, which is the most accessible part of this uh, connectivity because my phone, my device is connected through the radio frequencies within the cell tower or the base station. And what are the use cases here? So basically, for end-to-end -end com communication, for the best uh, user experience and best rendering experience, uh, spectrum capacity, uh, low latency, and also having a better handover experience uh, throughout the radio access network. A slicing and service level agreement. So in 5G, we, have, we are dealing with network slicing, and nowadays, too many researchers and universities, institutions, they're working on slicing security as well. And also, we will dealing with APIs, JSON, SDK, and some other networking platforms. So here is uh, an overview. So starting from the, like a, for an example, like a extended reality device. So we have a wireless chipset or Wi-Fi chipset and we have a 
OS level and hardware level and hardware platform there, and there is a connectivity through the radio access network toward the core network, as well as the APIs and softwares and uh, the rest of technologies in the core network. So starting from the, from the user point, so we can mention in baseband exploitation, the exploitation and vulnerabilities on the baseband side on the chipsets. So nowadays we know that too many uh, zero day vulnerabilities, one day vulnerabilities trading in, on dark webs and criminal firms uh, regarding exploiting uh, different kind of baseband with different vendors. So the second item is uh, the OS exploitation, remote code execution, and remote jailbreak exploitation on iOS systems, which is very, very interesting here. And, uh, and the next one is sim swapping as an optional uh, item here. I will talk about uh, all of those uh, in the next slides. So a bit further, we have a radio access part. So in this area, we can mention the user equipment information gathering by, pay for, by performing man in the middle, as well as uh, deploying a fake uh, station or fake BTS or fake uh, cell tower. And a bit more in, inside the core network, we can mention uh, deploying a rogue, node, a rogue node and a rogue function inside the core network or a fake node. I would say denial of service on a function, on a core function, as well as a denial of service on a user by making disruption on a normal user session flow, as well as a sniffing. So a bit more about the APIs because, for example, in 5G that I'm gonna talk about that. So we are going to deal with too many APIs calls and uh, also HTTP connection because 5G will open the doors, new doors to hackers and attackers around the world because it will be based on software-defined networking, network function virtualization, and uh, it's a bit more software rather than secret switching or radio part. Let's talk about OS and software. So I said that remote code execution on Android devices and remote jailbreak uh, uh, exploitation on iOS systems use after free vulnerabilities and exploitation and data extraction even locally or remotely and also one click kernel code execution or RJE which is a part of RJE which is one of the most valuable zero days nowadays. Here is uh, the radio access network architecture but this one is uh, for LTE part so we have different cell towers, like different E-node Bs here. They're connected together using the X2 interfaces and also they're connected to the core network. The left-hand side, you can see the mobile uh, uh, mobility management entity, which is responsible for handling the subscriber's uh, information, as well as the serving gateway and packet gateway. They're acting as a edge router and dealing with the uh, subscriber's data. And let's talk about the radio right now. Uh, so one of the most uh, important part of the radio exploitation is the uh, uh, ability to downgrade uh, subscribers in a specific area to lower technologies. Like if we are using 5G or 4G right now, if uh, a criminal or an att attacker uh, could be able to downgrade our cell phone to like a 2G or 3G, uh, technologies by performing jamming, as you can see here, it would be a very, very good environment for them to perform a, a man-in-the-middle attack because there, there is less security mechanisms in 2G and 3G networks. Also, nowadays, maybe you, you are using 5G, we are using 4G LT and uh, in the uh, next couple of years, we will use a 6G technology as well, but uh, mobile network operators and service providers still using traditional technologies. They're still using 2G, they're still using 3G. So, and the most vulnerable part of the, those traditional technologies from a signaling point of view is usage of SS7 networks. So within the SS7 networks, also you're able to uh, like a 
extracting the very valuable information regarding the SIM cards and subscribers like the RAND, SRES, and KC, which is responsible for the confidentiality of my USIM and the cell tower. And if you are not able to do it in radio access part, it's easy to extract it from the core network functions inside the core network by taking advantage and exploiting the traditional technologies. So here is an example of uh, performing a denial of service on a metaverse user. So for example, we can assume that uh, that user is a XR device or a mixed reality device, etc. And in this example, you can see that the hacker will try to run a, a rogue and a fake cell tower to be able to uh, lure the victim, lure the using on that device to pretend that, hey, I'm a legit cell tower. And after that, because it's kind of cloning the configuration of the legit, legit cell tower here, and uh, the traffic area update, which is a necessary part of the attachment of my device to the cell tower and to the core network, will be sent to the illegal cell tower, which is a fake one now, and after that, it will respond with a uh, tau reject to the user. And after that, it will cause a touch reject. Then I will not be able to, to attach to the network. And it will be inside a loop. And uh, like a, in a specific area, it would be cause a disruption and a denial of service. So a bunch of subscribers, a couple of subscribers in a specific area, uh, they can't attach to the core network. So I mentioned about uh, SIM swapping, actually. Uh, so it's some sort of account takeover, actually. Uh, it's a mix of impersonation and insider attack. So hackers try to like, uh, perform a social engineering, uh, and as well as some uh, initial information gathering on a victim's uh, data, like the name, address, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we will try to pretend that I'm gonna uh, changing my SIM and the number, the actual MSISDN or phone number, will transfer to the illegal and fake SIM card or a hacker SIM card. And after that, uh, the hacker will try to perform a uh, request a 2FA, or, uh, and after that, unauthorized access to an account, and account will be compromised, and uh, hacker will try to actually uh, gain unauthorized access to that account. So there are some other uh, radio threats, like uh, exploiting the blockchain mutual authentication or a mass denial of service uh, by taking advantage of very big jammers equipments but it's not really uh, technical, so I'm gonna skip those. And talking a bit about the 5G as well, 5G core network, which is acting a, a vital role in uh, connectivity and connection of metaverse as well. So as you can see here, uh, we have a user equipment. Yeah, I said that there's a connectivity between user equipment, our cell phone, our uh, XR devices, et cetera, et cetera, within the cell tower. And these nodes are those big, big equipments, telecom equipments nowadays, but they are mostly software-based and they're virtualized nowadays. And we call them different functions. So we have a user plane function, we have a session management function, application function, and like PCF is uh, responsible for policy charging, and also uh, SMF is uh, responsible for managing the sessions, and also some sort of uh, data of uh, different functions, different core functions. And uh, yeah, uh, so if I want to mention some, some sort of uh, exploitation, let's talk about the denial of service or tampering on a metaverse telco infrastructure or user. So to do this, uh, regardless of usage of traditional technologies and only focusing on 5G core network, so within an initial access to the network, regardless of insider hacker or even a remote access to the one of the core network, a hacker will try to set up a 
a rogue function or a rogue uh, SMF here, or even compromising SMF instead of set up a new one. So, and we will try to send the HTTP2 request containing the network function node information, like the function ID and function configuration to the uh, user plane function. And uh, after that, a new rogue node B, which is uh, here is a SMF, We'll try to send a modification request to modify a function, actually, to compromise a function. Or even in another scenario, it is possible to send a session deletion request to UPF to actually delete a legitimate user session. And it will cause a denial of service and disruption to, to the normal user flow. To, through, through the network and uh, UPF is responsible for my uh, handling my connection from my equipment to the network, to the public network like the internet. So another one will be uh, denial of service on info and user in another perspective. So like a, a user traffic redirection example here. So again, we have a rogue node uh, here, like a SMF and a connection to UPF, and the attacker will try to abusing the PFCP or packet forwarding control protocol to send a session modification request to UPF and changing the destination address and changing the destination address to another address, which is a, like an interception point. And we have two different scenarios. In case of uh, a null or invalid destination, it will be cause a denial of service attack. And if the, uh, the node is available and already compromised by the hacker, it will be redirecting for the interception and the uh, uh, sniffing will be possible in this scenario. So that's uh, pretty much of it. Uh, if you have any question, I will be available. Questions, anyone? Looks like you saw your folly. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for your time. I appreciate it.